All right, Shalom, Rastafari, Senbet Salam, Senbet Salam, Shabbat, peace. May the peace of Yeshua rule and reign in your hearts and your minds, my brothers and sisters. To the glory of our Kedus, our God, Father, and King of Kings. Now, we're going to continue with this. We're still in this vid here called Age of Deceit, the full version on the, on the YouTubes. Um, and it has a subtitle, Fallen Angels and the New World Order. Now, we're at the point of the vid where the, um, the authors or producers in, in this classic um, 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 neo-white Eurocentric Christianity are trying to make a, a point here. Now, it seems to be that they are trying to um, um, demonstrate that there's this fallen angels and this new world order and this age of deceit and, and how one should stick to the biblical, scriptural narrative, so forth and so on. But they still are blind. They're blind to our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Therefore, they cannot see the truth of the King of Kings, of Kedemawi Haile Selassie. But on this particular point, we're going to continue on the, the, the false misinterpretation of the Bible that's based on the Septuagint, where they say in the Septuagint that in uh, Genesis chapter 6, where it says uh, sons of God, sons of God coming into the daughters of men, they say that the sons of God in the Septuagint were the angels or the angelicos, of the Theos, or the Theos, the Angelicals of the Theos. Now, this contradicts the Masoretic or the Hebrew Bible. This contradicts the, the Ethiopic or the Gutters Bible. This contradicts the Royal Amharic, the Metzhaf Kedus of Moa and Bethesem, Negeta Yehuda, the Konkan line of the tribe of Judah, Revelation 5.5 5 Bible. It contradicts um, the true interpretation of scripture. And so their argument is that the sons of God were the fallen angels. Our rebut and redirection based on the, the, the correct interpretation of the scripture is that the sons of God were the sons of God. Or in other words, the sons of Seth. Seth, the son of Adam. Yosen, Seth, the son of Adam, and Adam, who was called the son of God. Yes, Adam was the son of God. Now, in the New Testament, which is the revelation or the unveiling, you understand, of the Old Testament, we have that Christ is the Yeshua HaMoshiach, you understand, and let us properly ascribe the, the race, you understand the race, you understand the blackness of Christ, the true flesh of Christ. Yes, race does matter. Because if you say race does not matter, well, how can you properly interpret Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, in light of the true story? You understand of Ionized, the once lost but now found black sheep of the house of Israel. You understand? So, they deny this. Because they want to continue to perpetrate, to perpetrate this, this fraud, this lie. So what we have, you understand, what we have is, is, is this going on right here, the truth, you're right, all right, the truth, and the lie. And this lie is dated 1492. 400 years, 400 years is 1892, and the birth of the Son of Man of Lich. Tefari, of Lij Tafari. All right, so Lij Tafari, this, this, is, this is who we're speaking of, the son of man, Lij Tafari, Lij Tafari. All right, so after 400 years, our kinsman redeemer, Yovzen, has come. But, of course, they deny that, Yovzen, but they would never have the book of Enoch, you understand, of Hadenoch, or the book of Jubilees which actually is what Jude here in 1 and 6 is referring to. So the, the producer of this, or, or these people according to this, this, this white supremacy, this, this foreign European Gentile Christian perspective, you know, was, 
They say that these angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness to the judgment of the great day. Now, we just went through chapter 100 of the Queen of Sheba and her only son, Menelik, right? And in chapter 100, it actually, let's show you this right here, it actually um, it, it, it's concerning the angels who rebelled, concerning the angels who rebelled. So in the first part of this, we went through, you understand, we went through that, and this is the cover right here. You understand? So now when we now overstand and properly interpret Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, this is the seed of the woman. And we look into Revelation, right? Revelation chapter 12, it speaks of the same woman who gave birth to the man child who is to rule all nations. Now the connection with Ethiopia you know, and the connection with his imperial majesty is very clear, obvious, and evident. The reason why it's not more accepted in this world, because the world has been deceived. The world has been deceived by white supremacy. So instead of having a love for the truth, instead they believe this lie, you know, right? And this is the lie, Caesar Borgias. They take Caesar Borgias, you know, and for Jesus Christ. But the Bible did say there would be days like these, that there would be an antichrist, and the whole world would believe a lie except for that remnant who have received the love of the truth. And this is how we know I and I, Godfather, and King of Kings, the Ancient of Days, Kedamawi Haila Shalase. All right? This is the Ancient of Days spoken of in the book of Daniel, the Ancient of Days. And it's that kingdom, his kingdom, which they say, well, the imperial, the, uh, the coup, and it's no longer there. But it was not given to any other people. That is the stone that has not been cut by human hands. That is the stone that dashes that idol of global white supremacy in its foot that has stopped them in their tracks. All right? Now, with that being said, let us continue with this here and get to our main point in this. So, the angels, concerning the angels who rebelled, where do we, um, we, we left off um, roughly around um, the, the salvation, right, about the 120 years, right, 120 years, um, and those who admitted the word, of their fathers and did his will, no injury came from the waters of the flood. So it says, as in the days of Noah, as in the days of Noah, so shall it be when the son of man, right? As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be when the son of man. This is the son of man. This is the child of humanity, all right? This is Lij Tefari, Jehovah's. 1892, significant, you understand, very significant, go read um, Witness of the Stars, Witness of the Stars, E.W. Bullinger, especially the, the intro, you understand, which shows that even the celestial, you understand, the celestial heavenly signs, as the Bible says they would be there, were there in 1892, and just think about the date, 1892, right, on one hand, 400 years before, we have 1492. You understand how much more clear? So it's evidence on top of evidence on top of evidence on top of evidence. But why some folks don't get it is because the Bible says they have not received the love of the truth. Therefore, John says he sends on them what? Strong delusion so that they may believe a lie. And many of these, um, I would say brothers and sisters, even though they are heavily whitewashed, you understand? Because we have to make the case and see whether they admit or whether they uh, reject it. You understand? So what they're saying right here, as we as we um, go uh, go further, just to complete this particular chapter right here, it says that so we have the 120 years and we're in the 120, 
right now of Liz Teferi, of Ketamawi, Haile Shalase. It says that them and all sinners who have not admitted the word of Jah, right, the, the word of Jah, and those who have admitted the word of their fathers and did his will, no injury came from the waters of the flood, but he delivered them, saying, If thou admittest, my men, if you have trust in my word, thou canst save thyself from the flood. And Noah said, O oh, Adoni, I admit thy word. Make me to know by what means I can be saved. It's like we have to ask that question now. He says, As the days of Noah, so shall it be. Right in, in this particular time. So by what means can we be saved? And Ha Elohim said to him, Thou canst be saved from the water by wood. And Noch said, How Adoni? And Ha Elohim Baruchu, blessed be he, said to him, Make thyself a four sided ark, or a tabo, the ark, a merkev, and build it with the work of the carpenter, and make for it three stories inside, and go into it with all thy house, or your household. And Noch, he admitted, he trusted, he said, Amen to the word of Jah, and he made the ark and was saved. Now, hearken ye, hearken y'all to me, hearken y'all to I, even I and I, and I will explain to you concerning this thing. When Hashem gave the command, he could have given to Noah a wing like the eagle and transported him to the country of the Hiawan, of the living, with all his house, until his anger with the Chatiatenya, which the sinners who had not believed, who had not admitted the truth of the word of Jah and the word of their fathers had abated. Or he could have lifted him up into the air. Or he could have commanded the water of the flood, which was like a wall, not to approach the one mountain where he would make Noch to dwell with his sons and not to submerge the beasts and cattle which he wanted. But know ye this, Hashem was well pleased that by means of wood, which had been sanctified, the salvation of his creation should take place. That is to say, the ark and the wood of the mescal, the wood of the cross, the cross or the croix, right? The, 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 the primus St. Croix, right? Now, Hashem said to Noah, make that whereby thou shalt be saved. That is to say, the tabernacle of the Beta Christian. And when he said to him, make it four-sided, he showed that the sign of the cross was fourfold. Now the four corners of the ark are the horns of the altar. And he commanded Musa, Moses, the head of the fraternal order, the Lewawian, the Levites, to make the ark out of indestructible wood. Now, I just want to make a point about this wood, right? You know, the wood, right? The wood, if you look at this wood, the ebony wood, you see the humanity of Christ. This is what is so very um, crystal and clear. You understand, when we look at that wood, and we look at the feet of Yeshua, right? And we look at that wood, right? When we look at that wood, we see that blackness, you know what I'm saying, within that very same wood. It's just very, very interesting. You know what I'm saying? And even overlaid with gold, you know what I'm saying, is also very, very interesting. His feet are like what? Brass, you know what I'm saying, which are burnt in a furnace of fire, right? And it's here, that, that woolly hair. You know what I'm saying? We can clearly see that within um, Abba Kedus, you know what I'm saying, that woolly hair. You know what I'm saying? Look at that woolly hair right there. You know what I'm saying? See that woolly hair? This is the rear. This is a rare picture directly from Ethiopia. You understand? You've seen the other shots of it, but never quite, you understand, from this particular, this particular angle right here. This is the ancient, the ancient one, the ancient of days. Now, if he was a European or a Roman or a German, 
you know, everybody would have accepted it. You understand? But the Bible says that there would be days like these. So we're still in, we're still in the Word. We're still in, as they say, Bible country. And we say, Amen and Amen. So let's get through this right here. So that, that point about the wood, the wood and the connection with the humanity of the black man, and this is indestructible wood, right, wood that cannot be destroyed. I mean, if you look at what happened to black folks, you know, in at home and abroad, they should have been destroyed. If it was any other people, they would have done been destroyed. He said, I will sanctify thee by that heavenly and spiritual work of my hand, and do thou sanctify thyself, Make thyself set apart, you understand, from filth and impurity and fornication and vindictiveness. Brothers and sisters, I know this white supremacy is like a devil in the flesh, but you must sanctify yourselves from vindictiveness. Don't get the hate that hate produced, you understand, because the devil don't love those white folks. He may be using them, deceiving them, making them believe a lie. We know it's a lot. You understand? Let's hope and pray they wake up before it's too late. From vindictiveness and falsehood, together with thy brother and thy house, and sacrifice to me a clean sacrifice of cleanness. And I will accept thee after thou hast sanctified thyself and thy bait and thy house. Command all the people to sanctify themselves, to set themselves apart. You understand? To, to recognize the kedisana, the separateness. For my holy things must be offered by holy ones. My holy things must be offered by holy ones or the kedusa. And this thou shalt seek, the tabernacle of my covenant, which I have created for my praise, for his praise, his hoda, as in Yehuda. And if ye come with purity of heart, with love, and with peace, and with shalom, without mockery and reviling, and if ye will make your heart in respect of me and your neighbors, I will hear your prayers, and I will listen to your petitions, your abetuta about everything which ye submit to me. And I will come and be with you, and I will walk among you, and I will dwell in your heart, and ye shall be to me my people, and I will be your God, Bonet, Bonet, in truth. Now, brothers and sisters, you've got to really pay attention to what it's saying here. He's saying to us that, yes, he knows, he knows our flesh. He knows we were created in the image of his likeness. But don't let that parasite, you know what I'm saying, germinate in your mind. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of, a lot of our folks, uh, either they may mean well, but meanness is not wellness. You know what I'm saying? Remember, Satan has no power. The only thing he has power to do is to germinate a thought. So he's trying to get both sides right now. You know what I'm saying? He got to black folks in ancient times, and now he's using white folks now. Now a lot of black people are learning some of the truth, and he's trying to get you caught up, you know what I'm saying, on the hate that hate produced. So white supremacy, say white supremacy, was a delusion, a lie. So then in, in opposition and response to that, we say, what, black supremacy. But brothers and sisters, I mean, so far we can take that in truth. We have to get to God's supremacy. And this is the level of God or Jah's supremacy. Where he says, and if, if ye come with purity of heart, with love, and with peace, with shalom, without mockery and reviling, pay attention, without what mockery and reviling. Oh, them so white because white, 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 white. And now we know the truth and we start to do those things. Does he hear our prayers? You know what I'm saying? Does he listen to our petitions? In other words, knowing all that we know, you know, from the so-called Afrocentrics, we should be further, you know what I'm saying, that we should be further, you know, towards the goal. How come we are not? How come we're in the same situation? Think about that without mockery and reviling. And if you will make your heart in respect of me, make your heart right 
in respect of me and your neighbor, I will hear your prayer. So if our heart, if our conscious, our conscience, our consciousness is not right in, in, in the righteousness of Yeshua, in the testimony of Yeshua, in the commandments of Abba Tachin, of Abba Kedus, of Hashem, right? Then he doesn't hear our prayers. He doesn't listen to our petitions. You understand about anything or about most things or whatever. You understand? We have no standing in that holy court because we have not made ourselves holy, set apart. And so we're in the world, not of the world. So if we want to get our prayers answered, if we want to have him listen to our petitions about what? About everything. I don't know about you all, but I would want him to hear me in everything, in all my prayers, and listen to all my petitions about whatever I submit to him. And he says that is so if we, if we what is it, if we come in purity. You understand? This is why Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 9 to 10 says, For then he will turn to the people a what? A pure language, that they all may call upon the name of the Lord to do what? To serve him with one consent from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. You understand? Uh, my suppliants. You understand? Those who supplicate to me, even the daughter, the daughter of my dispersed, who are, the, who are the daughters of his dispersed? Is it white folks? Is it European, Ashkenazi, Khazarian Jews? No, it's not. They have their story. But what about our story? You know what I'm saying? Our story is the story of the scripture, is the story of the Bible. You understand? Know and the righteous angels weep, in, in, in other words, metaphorically, that many of our people still have, you know, they received so much germination of Satan, so now they're in, you know, trying to get even with the devil. And they don't recognize that you get even with the devil, you are a devil too, even if you are a devil in black skin. You understand, the black and white devil, that's what the nine bingy fire burn, you understand, judgment to black and white down pressers. You understand, no partiality because they are black and they get a bride. See, some of y'all keep trying to weave that in there, you understand? But he will come to I and I and be with I and I. He will be with us. He will walk among us. He will dwell in our hearts. And we shall be to him his people, you understand? That people for his namesake, Rastafari, you understand? And he will be our God. He is our God in spirit and in truth. And the sons of God, now notice this. They're trying to say that the sons of God, Miss Gunner, that the sons of God were the fallen angels. Can you be lies? Yeah, not me, but they be lies. The sons of God are the fallen angels. And they really, they defend this with everything they got. You know, because you're going to notice what he's going to say when we take it off a of pause. I know we've been on pause for the cause for a moment here, but let's just turn our Bibles to Jude, to Jude first chapter. Jude, Jude is Yehuda. Yehuda. You understand? Moa on Vesa. The in the get Yehuda. That's what Jude is. I know Jude. Hey Jude. You know you know that, right? Okay, scratch. But this is Jude, the brother of James, Yaiko. James, right? Now, um, the theme of this book is it's one chapter. They call it a book, but the theme of this, it is not so much Jude who speaks as the, as the um, constraining spirit in verse 3, and the theme is contending for the faith. The theme of the book of Judah, of the book of Yehuda, is to contend. You understand, when we talked about um, the Gedla Adam, Let's just show that right there again in this vid. The Gedla Adam, which gives us the backstory. You know, in the backstory on the Garden of Eden. This was known in this time in the book of Jude time. And, and we can show how even in the New Testament that they had these scriptures. They were familiar with this knowledge. But much of this was lost to white Western Gentile Christianity. 
So this is where they add and allow their own European um, heathenism, occultism, paganism, you understand, into the whole, the, the, the whole script. Well, this is where they get lost. You know, so their white Jesus and all that comes out of their Nordic Odin and all of that kind of stuff. So when people say it's Haile Selassie God, we have to say, well, what you mean by God? You know, saying because to the Germans, Odin is God. You know, understand to the Greeks, Zeus is God. You know, saying and all of those um, Canaanites, Europeans, they had their own different gods because they worshipped many gods, the Baals, the Balaam, so forth and so on, sun, moon, and stars also. All right, but it's in this book right here that when we say contending, when we say contending, right, contending is a tigal, uh, tigadalo, that word contending is like the word jihad in the Arabic, right? Now, um, in Luke chapter, there's a reference, Luke chapter XVIII, which is 18 and 8 references, right? Um, in this brief letter, and it is a brief letter, right, it's speaking of apostasy. You understand? The apostasy. Manafikan, the, the um, kahari woj, the, the, the falling away, 2 Thessalonians II, 3, or 2 Thessalonians 2, chapter 2, verse 3, and the references of the professing church. Is predicted. It's like when we look at the Ethiopian church today for all of its whitewashed images, how it has fallen off. How have they become? How have they become ashamed of this image, and instead would put Lucretia, Lucretia, who was actually the daughter, who was actually the sister of Caesar Borgia, the daughter of Pope um, Alexander the Sixth. So where have these pictures? gone in the church and why we see these white um, um, uh, renaissance paintings when these images right here go to the very foundation of Christianity keeping alive the truth you understand so we see that even the EOTC no matter how much you may like it you understand has apostatized itself because it has the image of the beast and so the true images it, is, it has lost the contending. It's not contending for the image, you know, for, for the faith. And that means also the iconography, the iconography as well. You understand? I mean, to see these, um, you know, these black folks in Ethiopia bowing down to Caesar Borgias, you understand, bowing down to, 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 to this 1492 image, you understand, and then rejecting you understand that rejecting her own testimony is what the book of Jude or Judah speaks about. So it should not really surprise us, you understand, when we get the overstanding, you understand, the full script. So, so this brief letter of the book of Jude, Judah, you understand, um, it describes the apostasy of the professing church that was predicted. The cause and the course is described. What caused it and what course it has taken and what course it is taking. Now, as in Second Timothy and Second Peter, the apostasy, the apostasy is um, treated as having already set in. Even from such a time, it already was setting in, which is very, very, very interesting. Now, this epistle, interestingly enough, is also divided into five divisions or five sections. Introduction, occasion of the epistle, the apostasy is possible, the apostate teachers are described, but the saints, the fullness is that the saints or the Kedusan, the holy ones, are assured and comforted. And the chief, um, the chief reason and desire of these messages and teachings are to assure and to comfort the Kedusan, to comfort I and I, Rastafari brothers and sisters, our Ethiopian Hebrew faithful brothers and sisters, and even among the righteous, among the Gentiles, whether they are black Gentiles or white Gentiles. Yes, they are both categories. All black folks are not Beta Israel. Let's just recognize that. So right here, if we go through this, because that's what, verse 6, so we can go up to at least verse 6, introduction. Jude, Judah, the servant of Jesus Christos, the brother of Yaakov or James, 
to them that are sanctified, that means to those who are made made holy or induced by God. They are sanctified by who? By a priest? By by a church that they go to? You know, a pastor? You know, a preacher? No, they are sanctified by God. By ha Elohim the Father. They are sanctified by God the Father. By the God Father the true God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And they are preserved, preserved in Jesus Christos, and they are called. In other words, they don't show up uninvited. They are called. It says, mercy to you and peace and love be multiplied. You see that verse 2 right there? If you're looking and, and everybody who's not looking, either you're, you're, you're driving and listening to this or something else, but you should be looking at uh, the, the general epistle of Jew, right? And the second verse is the greeting right there. Mercy to you and peace and love be multiplied. Now, the occasion of the epistle of the um, Melikit is the apostasy, the falling away, the falling away, the, the wicked. The failure. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write to you of the common salvation. You know, people think, oh, it's my Jesus. No, 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 no. There's a common salvation. It was needful for me to write to you as it's needful to even record this vid for you all and exhort you, that means build you up, that ye should, that y'all, let me say it, like y'all can receive it, y'all, ye is y'all, that y'all, you all, y'all, should earnestly, earnestly, that means zealously contend for the faith, contend for the hymenote, to contend for the faith which was once delivered to the Kedusan. This is that apostolic faith. So if, if y'all recognize one of the... Um, with the document, the one about the apostolic constitutions, the apostolic constitutions, um, you'll know of that. There's a vid out for that as well. That right there is showing us the faith, the true faith that was once delivered to the Kedusan. Not all this newfangled Christianity and these, you know, like drive-through Christianity and skateboarding Christianity surfing Jesus and all that garbage or that blasphemy. You know what I'm Verse 4 says, For there were certain men who crept in unawares. So, some kind of people crept in while, while, like I said, while men slept, right? While men slept. The tears, the tears. You check that one out yet? The Rastafari, Imero. For there were certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained for this condemnation. So as we are destined to reign, they were um, before of old ordained. You understand? And soon they're going to be arraigned to this condemnation. Ungodly men, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God, of Amlakachin, of Eloheinu in the Hebrew, into lasciviousness, all this foolishness, this stupidity that's going on in the so-called name of Jesus Christ, and denying the only Lord God, the only Adonai Yahweh, Adoni Yahweh, and our Lord, Adonai Yeshua HaMoshiach, right? Now, part three, historical instances of apostasy. So this gives us the historical instances of falling away. He says, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this. He says, I'm going to remind you about something that you should already know, that you didn't know one time. How that Adoni, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that did not lament, that did not admit, that did not give credit, you understand, that did not trust. See, your Bible said believe, but we know that that goes to the foundation of Mammon, of Amen. They did not Amen. They Amen not. So they were destroyed. So check this out. He delivered them, right? And then afterward, because they kept on going on being stupid, 
and would not repent or have a change of mind, the very same ones who he delivered, he destroyed. Now, some would say that's cruel and unusual. Mm -hmm. But you know what? If it was you, you wouldn't even probably give the person, the people, that much opportunity. Mm -hmm. So that has to be that has to be on overstood right there. And the angels, verse six. Now notice how this connects. Verses. This is the verse that's on the screen. And the angels which kept not their first estate. We just read about that in chapter one hundred about the angels who rebelled from the Kupra Neges, from the queen of Sheba and her only son Minulet. But they left their own habitation. He has reserved an everlasting chains under darkness to the judgment of the great day. Verse 7 says, Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to pornification, to fornication, and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example. They are given for us as an example. Suffering the vengeance of eternal of eternal fire. Now, if you go forward in this, and let's just go forward because part four, right, is the apostate teachers described. And what we find in this documentary here and some others like it, although there are some points that are worthy of all acceptation, there's some things that have to be exempted and have to be corrected because um, if you weigh it, what they're teaching here is the doctrine of apostate teachers, where in verse 8 it says, Likewise also, likewise also, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh. Mm-hmm. It's amazing what you see going on. I thought it was only Africans that put bones to their nose and all that kind of stuff. You see white folks doing the, all those kind of things. The devil really got them going, right? See, if they had accepted the truth of, of the black messiah, and have not fought, you see how they fought against COINTELPRO, Antichrist agenda. They defile the flesh, despise dominion. When we say that Hala Selassie is earth rightful ruler, they despise that. And they speak evil of dignities. 